and welcome back to the Steel to Stone channel. Thanks for checking back in with me. So today we are finally, finally going to do the full review on the Sage One and Maximet coming out of Taichung, Taiwan, Spyderco's factory out of there, designed by the man himself, Mr. Sal Glesser. And um, these are about $206 from most retailers, and they are still available at most places if you guys are interested in picking one of these up. Um, I think Spyderco still have some on their website, and a couple different retailers out there still have some in stock as well. So definitely if you guys are interested in picking this up, go uh, look at your favorite knife retailer, and they might have some in stock. So... Um, yeah, let's get into this, get after it, and do a quick review of the Sage One. And uh, you guys saw all the specs and everything on the screen when I did the uh, the sort of run over of the knife, comb over, whatever you want to call it, the B-roll footage. And um, so we don't have to talk about a whole lot of that. We will do a couple size comparisons while I talk. I'll let you guys look at that. And so... For those of you who don't know, the Sage One was created as part of a series that Spyderco did called the Sage Series. And there's five different knives in total. And the purpose of the series was to create a excellent design and showcase different locking mechanisms in that design to sort of celebrate different knife makers in the industry and the locking mechanisms that they've created over the years and like I said they did five different designs and this was the first one in the series and this knife is actually discontinued now um, so it was very curious when they brought it back to put a, a maximum blade on it but we'll talk about that in a second so this is the Sage One with Michael Walker's liner locking mechanism on it and you know it seems like a great choice to be the number one in the series and the reason why i say that is because <laughs> the liner lock is used on a whole lot of different knives in the industry i mean at some point i would say every single not production knife company out there has probably used a liner lock or currently uses one so definitely a widely used very easy to manufacture locking mechanism as well as a very strong locking mechanism and one that I feel like most people just instinct instinctually know how to operate without even, you know, even if you're not a knife enthusiast, you don't own a lot of folding knives, you hand somebody a knife with a liner lock, they just instinctually know I need to press that down to unlock the blade. So definitely a great lock. And that's why it's so widely used today. So, like I said, this knife is discontinued. And when they first announced it last year that they were going to be making these, it was kind of puzzling to me, and I'm sure it was to a lot of other people as well. And I was trying to figure out why. Why exactly that they would decide to bring back a knife that they discontinued due to low sale volume while they would bring it back and put a different steel on it. And... The only thing that I could really come up with was that maybe they decided to do the entire series again in Maximet because they know people love Maximet and this sort of seems like the perfect platform to put it on. This is sort of a small, lightweight, sort of light duty EDC or gentleman's carry, which to me personally, that just sort of sounds like the perfect type of knife to put a production version of Maximet steel on. Um, and I just say that because... You know, you could buy this as your one good knife, your one good gentleman's carry, or sort of light duty EDC for opening packages and envelopes and things like that. And this steel is going to hold an edge so well that if you're the type of person that just uses your knife, you know, five to ten times a week to occasionally open a package or an envelope or something like that, you could you could probably use this knife for a lifetime without ever having to sharpen it if that's all you really use your knife or at least for several years before it really got dull enough to where it wouldn't reliably open a package or cut open an envelope so yeah it seems like the perfect knife and series to put this knife on and I think that Spyderco has done an excellent job with this so the way I sort of see this knife is just sort of simple perfection and 
I'm going to go ahead and say that and tell you guys that this is excellent. I mean, in terms of a high-end, you know, sort of mid-range price EDC knife, it really doesn't get a whole lot better than this. And there's very, very few things about this design and the execution of this that I can really criticize. So just, you know, sort of right out of the gate here, yes, this is an excellent knife, and I think it's absolutely worth the price. And if you're just looking for one really good EDC knife or gentleman's carry, this could definitely be it. And I wouldn't fault you at all for wanting to pick this up because obviously I did as well, and I absolutely love it. And with Maximate Steel, like I said, Maximate, if you guys don't know, is not a stainless steel. So it's a, uh, a steel that was created as a alternative to carbide. So when they're making tools for machining different types of metal and things, carbide is a very hard material that has very, very good wear resistance, but can often be brittle and break easy. So they created Maximate to be like an in-between between a regular high-speed steel and a carbide. So it'll give you better wear resistance than the high-speed steel, but be a little bit tougher and less easy to chip and break than a piece of, than a carbide tool would. So that's the reason that Maximum was created and Spyderco decided to, to start putting it in some of their higher end knives. And I think that <laughs> we're all pretty grateful for that. So that's the gist of what Maximum is. And basically it's the, uh, the most wear resistant steel on the market and it can stain on you. So if you live in a, a very humid or salty environment, then definitely you would need to keep this coated in some sort of oil or, you know, EDCI or something like that. But where I live in the, uh, the Eastern United States, a couple hundred miles off of the coast, I don't keep anything on any of my tool steel knives. This Rex 45 here, the Maxima, as long as I keep them clean and don't, you know, cut food with them and leave the residue on the blades, then usually they're fine for me. They don't patina or anything, and I don't, I don't put any kind of oil or rust preventative on the blades. I just leave them like they are and, and keep them cleaned off, and that seems to work well for me. So, definitely seems like a great option to put this on this little lightweight folder, and let's take a, a good hard look at it real quick. So. You see the uh, the leaf-shaped blade here with a gorgeous satin finish. They've done an excellent job with this blade from the primary grind to the sharpened bevel to the finish on the blade and everything in between. It's, it's pretty much perfection on this. So let's start at the top and look at the spine. You can see they've done a real nice satin finish. Sort of looks like a hand rub satin finish on the spine beautiful jimping up there that's been really cleaned up well and polished the opening hole has been chamfered on the back edge there as well as deburred very well so it's not really sharp at all um it's got a little bite to it so you can still catch your finger on it but it's not gonna it's not sharp at all honestly it's not gonna cut you or anything like that and then you got spider Co's logo there and i think tachong has the best looking Spyderco logo it just looks the the classiest I can't get it to focus but you can sort of see the laser marks in there if you look at it really closely come on yeah yeah you can kind of see it a little bit sorry about the lighting but uh nonetheless beautiful satin finish on the blade and they did a really good job with this satin finish uh, my Endura, for example, you could still see some of the grind marks in the primary grind on this, but you can't see that on the sage here. All you can see is the intentional satin finish that they've put on the blade, and it looks really nice. Then, looking at the sharpened bevel, they did an excellent job sharpening this knife all the way back to the plunge grind, so I was really happy with that. And just excellent. They didn't gouge it out a lot and waste a bunch of steel. It's just simple perfection and and done really well and i like the way they do the uh <clears throat> the juxtapose grind lines going this way and on the flat they go this way so it looks really good juxtaposed to each other sort of the way they did on the f5.5 as well you can see it's a little more pronounced on this one but definitely looks really good i like when uh, 
when knife makers do that. So jimping underneath the blade looks really good as well. Nice and cleaned up and polished. But even though this is pretty heavy, heavily polished, it, it they both work really well. It grips your finger well still, and uh, it's not ridiculously uncomfortable under here, even though there is some jimping there. So definitely can appreciate that fact. And then moving on to the handle, you've got this gray G10, which, uh, you know, it seems like a, an odd choice for this particular knife. I know they've done gray G10 on the uh, the Golden Colorado Maximum models, but on this one I wouldn't have mind seeing something a little classier, but maybe they were trying to keep the price down for people, so that's definitely fine, and I've got no problem with G10, and I think the gray actually looks pretty good, so I'm okay with it, but obviously would have been cool to see, you know, some marble carbon fiber or something else on there as well, I think would have looked really good, but nonetheless, really good design on this handle nice large chamfer all the way around the uh the liners look good and polished around the edges uh t8 torx bit screws very minimal body construction all the same size t8 screws and just three of them with the two standoffs there and one of them you know holds the the wire pocket clip so that's really good and then you've got this really nice sort of 3d milled chamfer around the uh the cutout for the liner lock and that's a very generous cutout which is one of my favorite things about this because you know unlike the f5.5 here you sort of have to go at this at a particular angle and sort of use the very end of your thumb to disengage it and you know almost just use your fingernail to disengage it and with the sage here i can just sort of you know <laughs> just jam my finger right in there and and disengage it and the action is very smooth as you can see you push the liner in and it sort of drops closed let the uh the finger tool land on top of your fingernail like that and then just close it the rest of the way so that's really awesome i like that a lot i mean it's a almost a perfect execution of a liner lock so they really tipped their hat in an ode to michael walker in, in making this a really exceptional exceptionally well done liner lock so i can definitely appreciate that i will say it could have been just a little bit better if they would have chamfered this edge right here like they like they have on the uh, the F5.5. I think that would have been awesome as well. But nonetheless, a very, very good example and probably my favorite liner lock that I've ever used. The way that they have this large cutout here, I think it works well. And it's still very comfortable in the hand. So definitely an excellent job executing this whole handle. And... You know, this knife probably has the best ergonomics of any knife I've ever felt in my hand. Um, and, you know, I can say that with complete confidence, it really just is that comfortable. And if we look at the inside here, we got these heavily milled out liners. So this knife is pretty light at about just a hair over 3.3 ounces. And you can see all the holes that they've put in the liners. The liners are nice and polished. They look really good. You can see how good the polish is right there, just on the top right there. So definitely a good job with that. The lockup is sitting right in the center of the blade, so that's very good. Super solid lockup, no blade play in any direction. I can see a case for making that just a little bit lighter, but nonetheless, a very good job. And I'm very happy with the action on this. And... <clears throat> you know, this being a hardened piece of stainless steel, this liner is going to hold up for a very long time, regardless of where it's at, you know, underneath the tang of the blade. So a really good job with the execution of this. <clears throat> and then last thing we'll look at is the pocket clip. Obviously, the Spyderco's deep carry wire clip, which, which is probably my favorite clip in the industry. And, you know, it's executed beautifully on this super deep carry. I love the way the wire clip works. It's got a good bit of retention, but it's sort of, you know, it's round like a paper clip. So it slides in and out of the pocket really easily. And I think it looks good as well. So love the fact that it's part of the body construction and you don't have to have extra screws to take off to get this off. You know, you just take that off and you have to take it off anyway to get the knife apart. So I think that's awesome the way that they've set this up. So, yeah, just a really, really excellent design, a really good fit and finish, and just a beautifully executed knife 
overall and I'm extremely happy and pleased with it and and absolutely think that it's worth it and I want to show you guys one thing before we end this and I want to compare this to the pair of three for you guys so these are very similar in size and overall length so if we line up the ends of the handles on this line right here actually that's not lined up for you guys so let me push that forward just a little bit and we'll line this one up on the end as well and then we look at them. So the pair of three is just a hair longer. Not by much. Maybe an eighth of an inch or so. But if we take these knives and let's lay the sage on top of the pair of three. And compare them like that. Now you guys look at this. Look at the profiles of everything. I don't have it lined up but. There you go. I mean, look at that. They're, <laughs> they're almost identical. I mean, slightly different, I'll give you that. This chul's a little larger, the end of the handle and the middle is slightly different there. But, I mean, for the most part, this is almost the same knife. You make this the Sage 5 with the compression lock instead of the, the Sage 1, and you've got a almost an identical knife with a different blade shape so very similar to the pair of three and they also do this one in maximum so i would say it just depends on a couple different things which one you would rather have because they're the same price this one i see as more of a, a slicer more of a gentleman's carry a little bit classier with a better finish overall than the standard pair of three is with the maximum blade and then this one is just a little beefier, you know, it's a, uh, they've got the same thickness in liners, but this one is a little thicker in the handle, a thicker blade stock, it's a little thicker behind the edge in comparison to most of the sages, so this is just a bit of a beefier knife, and as well as which locking mechanism you like better, the liner lock or the compression lock, and just the overall aesthetic, so this is more of a working knife, I would say, and this is sort of a light duty or gentleman's carry knife, at least in my opinion, but both really good choices, and like I said, they're they're about the same price, so just depends on which design you like better, I guess, as to which one you should get. So I've been carrying the Sage on and off for the past couple months, and I've got to say, I mean, <laughs> it's really hard for me to criticize this in any real way. I honestly haven't found a single thing aside from I would like that to be chamfered a little bit and uh, you know a couple little minor nitpicks here and there but for the most part I mean this is is phenomenal I mean it is absolutely sort of EDC perfection perfect EDC and yeah I mean using this with the blade shape that it has that good little bit of belly the fine acute tip works well for light duty tasks like opening packages and things like that it's a beautiful knife it carries very well in the pocket it's pretty lightweight for what it is and the ergonomics are just like i mean they're so fantastic this knife feels so comfortable in the hand it feels very similar to the pair of three but pair of three's got that you know pretty drastic ramp behind the hole right there and this is a, a little bit less pronounced so honestly think the Sage, as well as having this larger chul here, is a little more comfortable in the hand. And you also got a, a pretty generous sized chamfer around the edges, which makes it more comfortable if you're putting more pressure on the knife. So yeah, I've really enjoyed carrying this, as well as with the action with those phosphor, phosphor bronze washers. Is I mean, look at that. That is absolutely the way that you would want it to be. The detent is adequate. It's not too strong and not too loose. Or too weak I guess you would say and yeah just an absolutely beautiful knife in the closed position as well sort of looks like a, a teardrop shape almost and yeah overall guys just an excellent job with this design and I'm extremely pleased with it and absolutely think it's probably one of the best EDC's especially with maximum steel on the market right now that you could pick up so I think that's about all I've got to say for this on this for now so 
thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, found that useful, and uh, let me know what you guys think of the Sage 1, and are you guys also hoping, like I am, that they do the rest of the series in Maxima? I think that would be awesome. I'd love to own a Sage 2 in Maxima, so I'm definitely going to keep my eyes peeled for that. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you soon.